What's going on guys? So today I have a fun topic for you. First thing I want to say is if you clicked on this video thinking it might be an RB video or something else, just please stay and hear me out for a little bit. Some of the things that I want to talk about in this video apply to all people and that's why I titled this video the way I did. This is the first video that's going to be 60 FPS of ground forces with the shadow play setting. Uh, some people suggested to use uh, Audacity, Audacity I believe? Uh, and the only reason I can't do that is, well, I could do that if I was playing on by myself, but if I was playing with people, um, Shadowplay would pick up my mic, or the people I was playing with mic, which still sounds bad. But regardless, we're not here to talk about my technical issues or what I'm going to be doing. What we're here to talk about today is Sim, and in the background, you are watching the most unbalanced Sim event currently being run. Simulator battles are my favorite part of working and I hardly show them compared to everything else I play because they're not the most favorite. People like to watch refreshing sim gameplay sometimes and most people appreciate it a lot more than RB but it just doesn't hold the viewer retention that the RB does or even plain content. I, I would say the way it goes on my channel would be a tank video of RB which will get the most views. Then it would go a maybe SB video with a edgy kind of title. I don't really click bait. Um, I would just say I kind of get people to click, but it's not a bait. It's not a misleading title. Usually it has stuff to do. It has substance. It has what I do in the video. Uh, and then it would be air. And I think the reason for that is airplanes, people have their, their YouTubers of choice. And I've fallen out of the plane game for quite some time, so unless I was to make a lot of plane videos over the course of weeks, um, I wouldn't fall back into that category. People just count me out. Tank videos, I would assume that of the smaller YouTubers, I think people know that I can play tanks decently, uh, decent, decently and competently um, and stuff. I don't know where this took a track to talk about myself. Basically what I was saying is, I want more people to play SP. And I know it's a tough thing to get into, because it, it's kind of daunting at first, it really is, it truly is. It's a scary thing to look at. It's, um, you see, what is it? You see the fact that you have to use the real gun sight. You see the fact that uh, the spawns are different and the way the games work are a little bit different and change is scary to people. I know I used to feel that way. I'm gonna explain in this video a clear and concise way to understand Sim and get into it. The first thing and the most important thing you need to know are medium tanks and light tanks. Some TDs get two spawns and these are the tanks you should be playing when you're new to the, to the game. Too many people, far too many people, will come into Sim for their first couple of battles and they won't really know what they're doing. Um, even moderate players don't, don't really know too much of what they're doing and they'll come into battle in the Sim with a heavy tank. Now, I know this might sound contradicting considering I'm using a IS-6, which is a heavy tank, a one-spawn tank. This is different. When you come into a game like this with your Tiger II, in every single map, I see Tiger IIs on the worst maps for heavy tanks, especially in this event. I played 10 or 11 games last night in a row. I can't tell you how many Tiger IIs I killed because they're out of position on a terrible map for the Tiger II and Sim. Um, and don't think that all night I played the IS-6. I didn't. I switched the T-44-100 out with the IS-6. I had a lineup with both, and con considering what map I got on, I would change the tanks I was in. Also, that Tiger 2 p did friendly fire the Type 61, allowing me to kill both of them, which is, that's the second thing, <laughs> tank identification. So the first thing is, if you're new to Sim, take out a medium tank, take out a TD, or take out a light tank, so you know you will have two spawns. It's very helpful, even us, when I say us, I mean the people in G-Squad and the guys I play with like medium tanks more than heavies in these events. Because if you die, you know where the enemies are. You have a better understanding of where they are and you're gonna play your second life a lot better. It's just so much easier to have two lives. Heavy tanks should only be used on certain maps and you need to have a plan going into the map that you go into, map knowledge, and understanding of that, this is Sim. This is the end of the game in terms of skill cap. I think Sim takes the most skill. I think it's the hardest game mode to learn. 
Um, but it, once you learn it, I think it's some of the easiest and most fun and enjoyable gameplay you can have in War Thunder. But coming with that as a price, you need to have tanks that are set up for sin. You need to be ready to do this. There's no half-assing it here because you'll get found out. When you're half-assing it, you'll get you'll get caught up by some people who play sim like G-Squad. Some of these squadrons in here are very good at the game. I mean very good. They play together, they play smart, they bait, and they will rock some people. Um, so that being said, knowing the maps and knowing what your tank is good at on which map is just a fantastic thing to know. Uh, for a map like this on break, I knew it was going to be long distance engagements in the field. I took the most armored tank in this event. Even though it has one spawn, I knew that people wouldn't be able to penetrate me. I'm sitting on top of a hill in white camo right now, being that guy on my team saying, shoot me, shoot me, go ahead. If they pen, so be it, but it's very difficult because they have to deal with their parallax on most of their German tanks. And if they can get through the parallax, the long 88s are not really going to pen me too well, especially from these ranges. And I get to just sit back and since I've been playing all night, you can see some of the shots that I've been making and that I will make in this gameplay are very disgusting. I mean, I'm talking mantle shots from 1300 meters out, first shot. And you know what happens when you start to play a lot. So those are the biggest things that I can tell you. It's like situational awareness, knowing the map, knowing a plan and knowing what your vehicle's good at. That's after understanding the fact that you might have two spawns or one spawn in each vehicle. The, the thing, to continue on to vehicles, let's talk about planes. I would say bring a plane in. I fly with the mouse aim in sim because I have yet to set up my joystick. I have a joystick. I used to fly sim a lot. I wasn't the best pilot, but I had, you know, decent grasp on it. Me being completely lazy and not wanting to switch my controls, I fly with mouse aim and it gets the job done. I can still do a little bit of scouting for my team. It's like a last ditch effort. Usually if I bring out a medium tank and I die, I'll bring out a plane before I bring out my second spawn. Just because the battle might progress a little bit more while I'm in the skies and it'll make it easier for when you spawn in your third time. And I have no problems with doing more strategy videos on sim. Like I said, I, I really do think that I'm the most comfortable in sim out of any of the game modes. I mean, RB, I feel competent and I can play, but there's still a little bit of tweaking that RB can have. There's a little bit of that RNG. With sim, you know what you're going to get. There could be a difference with what enemies you're going to face because it could, you know, they could um, pick different tanks than what you're usually used to seeing. But you know all of the vehicles they are allowed to have in that match. And you know the biggest or the most played tanks are going to be in that match more than likely. You know when you see a plane uh, what they're going to do. You know most people's intentions when you get into a sim match. And that's why I feel really comfortable. It takes a lot of the RNG out of it. And it's raw skill. It's raw shooting potential. It's having your knowledge down. Having your comfort with your gun, knowing where your gun sight is, dealing with your parallax, map positioning, and it's just the rawest form of worth it. So that's why I'm making this video. I figured I'd give a little bit of tips and try to get some of you guys to try this. Now if you're going to try sim, which I encourage all of you to do, try a lower tier battle in a tank that you possibly have spaded and play with some friends. If you don't have friends, my discord is in the link down below and there are a lot of guys on there who love to play sim. Some of the G-Squad guys squad up every now and then. Just say at here in the squad request and just say, hey guys, who wants to play Sim? And I mean, that's that works for anything. If you want to play some RB or whatnot, feel free to hop in the Discord and whatnot. I, I try to do a little bit of squads, but I'm, I'm usually pretty busy. Regardless, I would say try it out. Now, what are the benefits to Sim? To try to keep this as a constructive, organized conversation. Well, the benefits of Sim are the same benefits that RB has to AB in terms of research points, kills, and whatnot. One, you're not going to tarnish your stats because of countless deaths, right? And I know a lot of people don't care about stats, but if you do, if you're the, the few that do, you're not going to get a lot of deaths on your name because you know you have a max of three deaths per game. That's it. That's the max. <laughs> you can't die any more than that. 
In an RB game, you could go 5-5. Five and five. It, it happens a lot. Another thing uh, are, is RP and lines. You won't lose as many lines dying in tanks because you know what tank you're going to go into and you know, you know how much it's going to cost you to repair if you die. RP is gained uh, a little bit faster in this game mode and kills count as three times. So if you're going for some camos, if you're really trying to get kills for some reason, um, and for an achievement or whatnot, they count as times three, how RB counts as times two. Uh, it goes like that for planes and whatnot. And the last thing is just the reward that you feel. Personal reward, in my opinion. That shot I hit on that tiger, like oh, most of these shots this game, just made me feel really good about myself. You know, you hit these long range shots, you don't even have to think about it, and they just feel great <laughs> once you have it down. It makes you feel like a boss. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, grinding is a little bit easier in Sim because you can take the same tank out twice, as long as it's not a heavy. So, let's say you're grinding the M47. It's a little bit more effective in Sim because you get to play the ninja role a little bit better. People aren't as, uh, uh, able to see you so to speak it's not such a linear combat in, in terms of RB there's a lot more spread out and kind of lone wolf style things and as long as you don't get TK'd which does happen sometimes because people don't understand oh these are the tanks that are on my team these are the tanks that are on the other team don't shoot these tanks um, aside from that you can grind your tank effectively with two lives most of the time in a sim battle which is really nice I think the stock grinds easier in sim than it is in RB because there's not that punishing constant front lines battle moving uh, like I said you can kind of just chill and snipe and do kind of what I'm doing in this game in any tank really just sit there and hold that position on the map and know you're gonna win this was a long ass game but if I was actually grinding something if I didn't have any everything unlocked in the Russian tree I would have got a lot of RP from this game I mean I sat here and got seven kills uh, you're gonna say well this is only six that I see but I'll put the seventh at the end because it was still a nice shot too so yeah, that's my advice to you guys. That's why I think everybody should play a little bit of Sim in their life. It is super, super fun. I enjoy the living hell out of this game mode. It's uh, one of my favorite pastimes. I'm sorry if you hear a plane outside of my window. I left my window open. It's a little hot in here. But I absolutely love this game mode. It's my favorite game mode by far. So if you guys check this out, if any of my tips help you out, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video because I helped you out or because you like me give it a like and uh, if you dislike it dislike it what are we gonna do with you you know what I'm saying I might have to call my boy Vinny up we'll come get you with the bat if you can find out you keep disliking my videos but uh, other than that uh, I might make a video if this receives a lot of likes and whatnot and people really do like this video I will make a couple videos doing a little bit of tutorial s things in sim talking about spots and strategies with certain tanks and also talking about problems with Sim, because there are problems. I'm in one right now in this event. So I'll see you guys in the next one.